Trainee pilots are taught how not to crash a plane. I sometimes wonder if potential Bible readers shouldn't receive the same kind of training before attempting to fly solo. If they did, maybe fewer people would crash and burn on their first attempt. I think most people would agree that the Bible isn't like any other book. Written in a different language about a people whose lifestyle was nothing like ours, it's no wonder that those brave enough to take this book for a test flight often struggle to make sense of what it says. Even the most enthusiastic often give up after their first few attempts. And for those who persevere, Bible reading can become nothing more than a pointless exercise of taxiing up and down a religious runway as they struggle to get this particular spiritual discipline off the ground. So maybe what's needed are a few basic flying lessons. Without making things too complicated, when it comes to takeoff, would-be pilots are taught a simple equation. Power plus attitude equals liftoff. So with the right attitude or angle of approach, plus the ability to draw on the power available, Bible reading, like flying, has the potential to give us a whole new perspective on life. But that said, many still see the scriptures as some kind of Bermuda Triangle in which you risk getting horribly lost. Thought by some to be nothing more than a good storybook, textbook, fairy tale, or simply a piece of pure fiction, the Bible isn't high on people's list of must-read books. Add to this the feedback we get from those brave enough to test fly this piece of ancient text, and it won't be long before you hear words like difficult, complicated, confusing, and boring. Wow, who'd have thought that a book that's a number one bestseller and found in the majority of hotel rooms around the Western Hemisphere would ever be called boring? Difficult, complicated, and confusing is understandable, because what appears to be a single volume is actually a whole library of books. With 40 different writers covering around 4,000 years of world history, Bible reading can seem a daunting task. Even the titles can terrify the unfamiliar. For while your Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are relatively easy, when it comes to your Obedias and Habakkuk's and Zacharias's, the Bible scores high on the difficulty scale. But rather than a whole load of mixed messages, many believe that the Bible carries one simple yet profound truth. For while some see this as a book that people wrote about God, Christians see it as a book that God wrote through people. An inspired piece of ancient text that simply says, God loves us no matter what. So I guess, like flying, getting our Bible reading off the ground depends on two simple things. Number one, our attitude or angle of approach to the book, and two, our ability to draw on the power available to us. When it comes to people's attitude, some seem to treat the Bible like a box of chocolates. Picking out their favorite soft centers, they leave the hard bits for other people, while others prefer to see the Bible as a kind of first aid box or spare tire, a seemingly non-essential piece of equipment that's good to know it's there in case of emergency. But when we realize that the Bible is not about good people versus bad people, but about God's love letter to all humanity, then maybe we just need to adjust our angle of approach. Because for those of us who see the Bible as a roadmap for life, a moral compass that shows us God's true north, this approach to Bible reading is more like a trip to the gym, a place where we exercise our belief in God and grow strong in our Christian faith. For others, it's like visiting a favorite restaurant, a place where we not only enjoy good spiritual food, but experience quality time with our Heavenly Father. But even the best angle of approach is not enough to get our Bible reading off the ground. For without the ability to draw on the power available to us, this spiritual exercise will never get airborne. So what about this power? Highly explosive and uniquely different, the Bible is one book that no one should fly solo. But readers should consider inviting the person of the Holy Spirit to be their co-pilot. For by engaging the expertise of the original author, 
Bible reading has the possibility to give us a whole different outlook on life. Forget your jet engines. The person of the Holy Spirit, resident within every Christ follower, is the power we need to draw on to turn this potentially mundane exercise into a supersonic experience. So the next time you're reading your Bible, why not imagine there's an empty seat next to you and prayerfully invite the person of the Holy Spirit to give you insight and understanding? Because with the right attitude and the ability to draw on God's power, Bible reading has the potential to totally change your life and take you to places you only dreamed of. Difficult, complicated and confusing, I understand, but never boring. With a cast of characters that would make any Hollywood producer envious, this book is one incredible adventure of faith, using history, poetry, prophecy and geography. The Holy Spirit enables the writers to tell us the story of God's love for all mankind. A love story that's ultimately demonstrated in the life, death and resurrection of God's Son, Jesus Christ. So if you want to experience the vast expanse of God's unmerited grace, feel the warmth of a peace that goes beyond all human understanding, or dive into the depths of God's love and mercy, why not take the Bible for a test flight? Maybe begin in the second half of the book and read either Matthew, Mark, Luke or John. No, it's not cheating. But remember, don't fly solo. Always invite the Holy Spirit to be your co-pilot. For with the right attitude and the ability to draw on the power available to us, Bible reading has the potential to become an ear-popping, heart-racing, earth-shattering, jaw-dropping, eye-opening journey of discovery like no other.